wear a, a, a any Brisbane team despite their record at the moment when you go up there? Oh, you have to respect the opposition. Um, we haven't got a, a great record playing in the state, so it's a great opportunity for us to uh, to win a game in the state. Yeah. Uh, Brent Stanton might play this week after I guess, a, a big hit on the weekend. Um, look, it's not certain that he's going to play at the moment. He's got to tick a few boxes, and so he's only certain. But we're hoping that he uh, he does because he's a very very important player for us. Well, a bit's been made the fact that a few sort of Essendon supporters cheered him when they found out he was south the other day. Did you guys notice that on the day? And, and what do you sort of make of, of that happening to one of your own players? Up in the box, you don't hear the, the crowd noise, but um, yeah, we, we, we found out uh, after the game. It's just amazing, really, that our supporters can do that. I thought that uh, most of the things we've done this year has been pretty positive, and from the coach's perspective, from Hurdy down, uh, we all love what Brent Satton does for the team. He's a, he's a leader of the team. He, he uh, takes people with him. He trains exceptionally well. Uh, we rate him as a, one of our best players, so to think our supporters would, uh, would cheer him is just it amazes me, really. Do you know what his reaction was? No, no. We've uh, all I know is that our uh, our players are right behind him, and the coaches are behind him, and the clubs behind him 100%. And uh, we'd like our supporters to get behind him, really. Just on the sub rule, um, six weeks, seven weeks into the season, has everyone got pretty sus doing the same things, or do you reckon it's still evolving? No, it's still evolving. I think it's different teams are doing different things, and um, you know we. Uh, we seem to do it about uh, 10 minutes for three quarter time if we don't have an injury. Um, and really, you have to assess the injured guys really quickly, which is a different thing. I, no I noticed Carlton, uh, you know, put the young board back on the ground to see mm -hmm. whether he could yeah. play or not. So well, it's, it's all these different scenarios that we're still sort of, um, you know, fighting our way through. Yeah, my next question was just that: Is there a propensity now, or, or a, a negative window, to put a hurt player back out because you want to protect that late sub? Oh, I'm not sure whether that's. Like if you know someone's injured, you're not going to put him back out there if he can't play. But that's that grey one, isn't it? That yeah. we really have to make a, a really astute decision quickly. Um, yeah, so that's that's something that Carlton faced. We haven't really faced that, so yeah. I'm, I'm I'm not sure what took place at Carlton. Mm -hmm. Has there been a temptation to play around with that? You, you said you know ten minutes before three quarter time is your preferred option, but have you wanted to sort of play with it a little bit to see if there's a, a better or worse scenario? Oh, not really, because you're always worried that you might get an injury um, as soon as you make the sub, and then you'd be down to two players, which puts you in a really bad position. So we, tr well, we at Essen just try and wait as long as we can, and we think that's the, the appropriate time that we feel is right. Um, and we've never done it because of a player's playing poorly. We've just done it waiting for that injury. Mm. Just on that, uh, two of the, um, the evolution of the sub rule and, and how it's affecting play, is the last 20 minutes of a game noticeably more important where you see teams tire of it. It seems yeah. like you know, a lot of good sides are really running over the top late. Yeah, it's a funny it's a funny thing. The, uh, the fatigue factor in a game <clears throat> is more prevalent now than it's ever been. And, um, you know, you could sort of question some of your team, team's decision making at times, but it's a fatigue factor, you know. There's one less player on the, you know, to, to rotate and players are playing more time and it's really difficult to get through that period. But, um, you know, that, that the sub guy comes on and he looks like he's got legs and, yeah. and if you pick the right one and he's in the right frame of mind he can have an impact and you, uh, you know Angus Monkries on the weekend did that for us. Do you find yourself us. liking it because you coach all through the, you know, the full rotation of the bench but you know, do you find yeah this is not bad this is good for the game or where do you sit on it? I think there was a lot of <clears throat> negative publicity about it earlier and I don't think it's as, as severe um, as what we thought. Uh, we're coping with it, teams cope with it, clubs cope with it so um, yeah I just hope that we don't get too many injuries later on. But you didn't say whether you liked it or not. Um, well, I haven't got a real strong view. I don't mind it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not you know totally against it. I'm not totally for it. Yeah. Just, we just they're the rules, and we'll just play within them. Seven rounds in, is the development of this the speed of the development of this group surprised you, given what you saw from the outside over the last couple of years? Um, yeah, look, I, I think that surprised all of the coaches. Um, you know, we've uh, they're, le they're listening and they're trying to do what you know. Coaching group is, is trying to teach them to play the sort of sporty that we want to play. So, and as a result of that, there's we have a higher um, um, a higher uh, greater thoughts about some of the players. You know, we, we uh, some of them are much better players than we thought they were. Mm. Does that mean the expectation for the year has, has changed a little? Um, not really. No. Look, although we've won some games and we've been consistently competitive, I think Hurdy. Um, 
you know, we're all pretty realistic about where we want to go and we realise that there's so much more we need to do with the club. Who are some of those players that have really surprised you this year? Uh, Stuart Cremieri, Bell Chambers, um, fantastic. Can you see any similarities to the development of this team to Geelong and say overall? No, a... not really. No, it's a totally different era, a totally different club. Mm. Hey, that's a fine. <laughs> <laughs> have you taken much interest in Geelong? Watching them? Oh, I watch all the teams, and uh, they're having a terrific year. Good on them. It'll be a great game Friday night. Going back to the Premieres and Bell Chambers, Bomber, are they players that you're surprised coming from outside to win that they're better than you thought they were? Do you mean, or blokes have improved since you've been? Oh, I think they're better, and they've improved so both. Even Hardingham, um, you know, is a very, very good player. Mm. Is the away form, the away record, the main concern about the match this weekend? Or? No, look, it's. it's it's not a major concern. I think the major concern that we have week in, week out is that we we have to you know, encourage the players, you know, we have to teach the players to be compet com competitive for every uh, match, for every quarter of every game. So um, that's our real challenge. That's what we want to see. I think that's what the fans want to see. Mm. Are you doing anything different on what the team's done in the past in regards to travel? No, not really. We, you know, we just got to hopefully uh, give the guys the belief that you know, if they if they do what they've been doing, then we'll go up to Brisbane and be competitive. And uh, um, you know, it doesn't really matter where you play. Um, you know, you just got to just put out the same effort every week, and uh, that's what it really is about. And good teams, you know, can win in the state. Well, obviously, it's been a good start to the year. How are you enjoying the the, the role working with James? Um, it's been a while since I've spoke to, spoken to you, but how are you uh, enjoying the, uh, the assistant coaching role? Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, it's uh, it's. It's really rewarding because we're getting some good results, we're improving uh, players and we're playing some decent football and having a lot of fun. What about James on match day? How have you, how have you found James on match day? <laughs> no, he's great. He, um, he speaks really well, he's got a calm head, he's learning on the job and I think he's going to be a fantastic coach. Mm. What's your main role? What do you Oh, I'm just. <laughs> um, I'm not so sure myself, but I'm just in the background helping set up the program, um, being a bit of a mentor for some of the new coaches and getting around to the players. That um, you know, um, with my experience, that you know, during matches, um, hopefully being able to fix a few little problems that that some players have. So, yeah, just a general sort of role. Early on, did you find it hard to pull yourself away from that? No, I haven't found it hard at all. Um, to be to drag myself away. I'm really enjoying not being, you know, the senior coach. How about the workload? I mean, the expectation from the outside is the head coach has an astonishing workload that can't possibly be enough hours in the day. The assistant coach is that the same? Do they? No, there's a few more hours in every day of your life, <laughs> and uh, there's there's uh, and the hours that you do have off are very enjoyable. Yeah, I'm enjoying what I do. Mark, is uh, Scott Gumbel, and what's the latest on him? Is he likely to return soon? Um. Yeah, about two or three weeks. He had a bit of a hamstring, and we sent him up to Canberra and uh, tried to get some some um, some um, some advice and have a, another eye look at him. And uh, we've come up with a bit of a solution, so hopefully we can put him back in the program pretty soon and uh, get some good results because we need him up and about. He's a very important player for us. Collingwood obviously uh, sounds silly, but they're flying. Um, it, Friday night can I mean can Geelong take it right up to them? Do you think you've got an intimate knowledge of the Cats? What do you think? No, I think it'll be a good game. Yeah, they always are. So, um, you know, two teams that are undefeated. It's uh, you know, the football can't get any better really than that. In terms of your mentoring of the players, is that one aspect that you're really enjoying having a bit more time as an assistant coach to really get alongside players and, and get in areas and teach them? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's uh, that's the best part about being involved in AFL footy. That as once you're not a player, is to, to help other players be. Uh, be good players. Um, it's something I've always enjoyed and enjoying it now. Still love it. So. Just about um, Jack Trenko, the three weeks he got for that tackle. What, what, yeah. um, what, what do you think of that? Is that uh, well, everybody knows you're not allowed to sling tackle. So, so you um, thought it was a sling tackle? I don't know. I didn't really look at it that closely. Yeah. 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 What did you say to um, Joe at three quarter time on the weekend? That was I told him it was fantastic for us to uh, to come back after West Coast playing so well and us being resilient and our third quarter was fantastic. That's exactly how we wanted the team to play and for him as leader not to let that slip and to drive our players to uh, be absolutely ruthless in how we want to play that last quarter. Yeah.
are you really impressed with his step up that he's taken this year? Yeah, he's a great leader. Um, we've got some fantastic players who we're developing as, as leaders and uh, so far they've all been um, you know, excellent in what they do. Yeah. Is this group a bit more ruthless than you thought? I mean, at times they've played Geelong in previous years, they've followed pretty quickly, but having been inside, is there a bit more drive in there than you thought? I think with our with our training program that uh, they're becoming that I think they we wouldn't say definitely that we're anywhere near where we want to end up but um, we're working towards that I think uh, it's a reflection of, of how the program is set up as to how we're playing now and it always has been in football uh, we we're starting to play the way we train and the way we want to play any changes in your concerns about football? Um, yeah there's a couple of little ones but um, you know, like Stanton's one. Um, uh, just, uh, there's a couple of other boys that are sore, but that, that's like every week. We're hoping that most of them get up, and Stanton's probably our biggest concern. Dustin's okay. Can't yeah, well, he's one that's got a little bit of a concern, but I think he's uh, he's probably ticked more boxes than Brent at the moment. And what about um, Heath Hocking? Had some work on his lower back last week. No, he's fine. I'm pretty sure.